Beware EV enthusiasts. Tesla shares lower, as GM has just announced their all-new zero-emission engine that will make electric and internal combustion vehicles obsolete. This all-new radical technology is said to be the next revolution in the automotive world and will drive us towards a completely eco-friendly future of cars. GM CEO announces this new engine that will change the world. What exactly is this all-new technology? GM has been searching for an alternative to EVs for years now, and their search has led them to the all-new compressed air technology. Compressed air has already been seen to be of limited use in the 19th century. However, the technology has since been dropped and forgotten in favor of internal combustion engines because of their immediate potency. However, in the early 2010s, the French car manufacturer Peugeot saw the potential in combining compressed air with internal combustion engines into an all-new hybrid technology that retains the eco-friendliness of a regular hybrid without needing a battery. While these prototypes didn't move far from the testing stage, they did spark a fair bit of interest from the rest of the automotive industry, most notably GM. GM saw the potential that compressed air vehicles harnessed. However, they also realized that such a technology needed a fair bit of development if it were to compete with regular internal combustion engines and the rise of EVs. As a result, GM started slowly researching and developing compressed air technology parallel to developing EVs and internal combustion vehicles. So, how do compressed air vehicle function? Compressed air vehicles function very differently from regular engines and EVs. Instead of having a conventional piston-driven engine or an electric motor, compressed air vehicles utilize specially designed pneumatic engines. The engine uses pistons, just like petrol-powered ones do. Unlike combustion engines, the pistons of a pneumatic motor are connected to a spring, and instead of relying on an explosion that creates the piston motion, Pneumatic motors introduce air into the chamber, increasing the pressure inside of it, which pushes the piston to its maximum length. The air is then released, and the spring that the piston is attached to pulls it back into its original position. The benefits of compressed air engine, it is 100% pollution-free. It's just pressured up air. There is no environmental damage being done while it functions. The compressed air engines solve one of the biggest issues that is direct pollution of the environment. Environment. Compressed air engines are far cheaper and requires no rare earth materials. Another key benefit is the production cost. Since compressed air engines endure considerably lower pressures, there will be a lesser need for strong and hardened steel or metal. This makes them both more economically viable as well as more eco-friendly to produce in larger quantities. These engines are simply 100% future-proof. They just use pressurized air that remains structurally unchanged after it exits the chamber. However, compressed air technology have a few drawbacks that keep them from being developed and used on a wider scale. Unfortunately, there are few issues that arise from using compressed air engines, which made them quite situational. Compressed air engines are extremely underpowered. Pressurized air has a very low energy density, which considerably lowers its potency. Due to them having light components and them not producing high amounts of pressure, the torque of such engines is lacking, which makes them much less usable in the real world. The engine spins at quite high RPM leads to excessive wearing of components since the engine does not utilize liquid as its main propellant. Introducing lubricators into the engine isn't as easy as on internal combustion engines. However, they are inefficient. Most prototype compressed air vehicles that have been developed have a range of only 140 kilometers. You would have to fill it up constantly. You couldn't reliably go on a moderately long trip. Finally, there's the question of safety. Most prototypes used regular steel air tanks for storing pressurized air due to a lack of a better solution. It would be prominently less potent due to increased weight, while also being susceptible to explosions if the tanks were damaged, as you were, after all, sitting on a bunch of pressurized gas. Before moving further, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, kindly subscribe to it now. GM has been working extremely hard on ridding this technology of its glaring issues, and they have been quite successful at it. 
the problem of the car's power has been solved with the introduction of new, high-pressure air tanks. These high-pressure tanks compress the air even further, which translates into higher cylinder pressure. As a result, GM's new compressed air prototype achieves performance figures that are pretty comparable to regular gasoline engines. The torque isn't quite there yet. However, they're still powerful enough for a normal commuter vehicle. GM has also found a way to extend the vehicle's range by turning the vehicle's chassis into one large compressed air reservoir, these engines entering mass production in the next few years. GM has truly invested itself in making this engine a reality. They keep researching and developing solutions to many existing problems that would revolutionize the automotive world entirely. GM understands all too well that the days of internal combustion engines are numbered, and they still don't have a foothold in the EV market. This isn't the first time a major manufacturer tried implementing compressed air into vehicles. Ten years ago, Peugeot made a hybrid version of their Peugeot 2008 crossover. Instead of using electric energy, this vehicle combined an internal combustion engine with compressed air. The result was a powertrain that merged the power and torque of an internal combustion engine with the ecological component of compressed air engines. It achieved a whopping 120 miles per gallon. Unfortunately though, Peugeot silently abandoned this project despite the very good initial results. There were no explanations given, Peugeot said they didn't find the project profitable enough, which frankly doesn't make sense. Back in the mid-90s, Stanley Allen Meyer developed the water fuel cell, which, when fitted to a car, could effectively make it run exclusively on water. He was constantly pressured by large oil firms into quitting his development of the water engine and confessing that it was just a fraud. Meyer resisted and kept fighting oil giants, while also searching for a company that would fund the further development of his water fuel cell. On the 20th of March 1998, Meyer, alongside his brother, went to a dinner with two Belgian investors. At one point, Meyer ran out of the restaurant, screaming that the two businessmen poisoned him. He passed away a mere minute later on the pavement in front of the restaurant. Oil companies are just too greedy to allow anything to eat up their profits. So, GM, if you are listening, keep developing the engine in absolute privacy, or else it might suffer the same fate as Peugeot's hybrid, or worse, Stanley Allen himself. Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.